Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problems that we are about to solve are the ones that you will find on page number. 156. Please turn to it. Page 166. Problem number 5 and 6 is what we are about to do. Both of these problems, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, all of these problems that you see on page number 156, all four of them, are the exact same problem that appeared on the exact same page number in the first edition of the revised GRE book. We have already solved all the problems, all the math problems from the first edition of the revised GRE. I'm just redoing them at a little bit of a faster pace. If you need to watch this video, if you need to watch the solution rather at a slower pace and a little bit detail, you can always go back to the original video, which was day number 55. Here's what is given to us, problem number 5. We are told that we have a variable x, a random variable x, which we are told is normally distributed. We are told that this variable is such that the observations fall, uh, fall in such that the 60th percentile happens to be the value of 650, 90th percentile we are told happens to be the value of 850. In other words, 90% of all the observations fell below the value of 850, 60% of all the observations fell below the value of 650. And the question simply is, how does the, sem how does the value of a 70th percentile compare to 750? Now what they're hoping here is that some people will sit there and say to themselves that if the 60th percentile is 650 and 90th percentile is 850 and 750 is the average of 650 and 850 therefore that must equal the 75th percentile because the average of 60 and 90 is 75. So since they, will, they are hoping that you will say that this is because 750 falls between the 650 and 950, therefore 650 and 850, therefore 75th percentile must be 750. That is not the case. As you will see in a second, if we draw, if we, if we plot the normal distribution, you will see how where, where what the shape what the shape of the normal distribution is and where where the variables are going to, where the observations are going to lie. For example. If we draw the normal distribution here, here is our average, here is the value of 650, here is the value of 850, here is the value of 850, the value of 750 is going to be somewhere, somewhere here, which is, which, is right in the middle of, which is right in the middle of 650 and 850 obviously, but the question is that 750 it translates to what percentile? 60% of the observation fall to the left of 650, we are told that's the 60th percentile, this is the 60th percentile. We are also told that the 90% of the objects will fall to the left of 850, so that's the 90th percentile. But that is not the average of 60 and 90, that's not how it works. And the reason is because a lot more observation, a lot more observation are going to fall between 650 and 750 than the number that you will see, and then, then the number of observations that you will see that fall between 750 and 850. And that goes by the area that you see under the curve right here. The area under the curve that falls between 650 and 750 is a lot more than the area that we see here. That falls between 750 and 850. In other words, what we are saying here is this part. What this means is that more than more than half. Listen, I'm not going to write everything down. If this is what you need, if this is the kind of help you need, where I need to write everything down, you can go back and watch the original video. Okay, I'm just going to I'm just going to talk about it. All, of all the observations, listen carefully. I'm going to say it. Of all the observations that fall between 650 and 850, of all the observations that fall between 650 and 850, more than half of them, a vast majority of them, are going to fall between 650 and 750. And therefore, the 70th percentile, 75% of the observations, the 75th percentile, the observation where below which 75% of the observation lie, 75th percentile will not be 750, 75th percentile will be to the left of 750. 75th percentile. In other words, what we're saying here is this. The area between 650 and 750 is far greater, as we can see, than the area 
between 750 and 850 and the area under the curve represents the density of the observation how many observations are going to fall are, are falling during between between the given in, in, in the given interval between 650 and 750 and between 750 and 850 and all that and therefore therefore the value of the 75th value of the 75th percentile is going to be less than 750 it is going to be less than 750 the value of 75th percentile is less than 750 in column B we have 750 and value of the 75th percentile 75th percentile is going to be somewhere here it's going to be to the left of 750 and on the column B we have 750 therefore column B is bigger the answer is B and that's all there is there is not much of a solution that you can do here there is not much of a calculation that is required at all as a matter of fact, there is no calculation required at all. They just want to see if you understand the concept. They just want to see if you understand the concept that just because 60th percentile happens to be 650 and the 90th percentile happens to be 850, that does not mean that does not mean that the 75th percentile is going to be 750. That would have been the case if these areas were equal. In other words, the the shape of the curve, the shape of the graph between 650 and 750, if that were symmetric to the shape that we see here then it'll be, they'll be the same. In other words, it would have to be a rectangle. It is not. It's, it's, as you can see, it's a curve. It's not a rectangle. It's not a straight line. It doesn't go like this. It doesn't go like that. Then the area between 650 and 750 would have been equal to the area between 750 and 850. That's it. Let's go on to the next one then. In the next one, there we are told that set S, set S contains all positive integers less than 81. Oh, actually, that's not the whole story. It said S, let me read the read property. It says set S consists of all positive integers less than 81 that are not that are not equal to the square of an integer. The square of an integer. Now what what gets a lot of people in this particular problem is the language. What you see here in the box here, square of an integer, what does it mean? And square of an integer is a very awkward way, it's a bloody awkward way of saying. Perfect square. One, one is a square of an integer. One is a square of an integer. Which integer is it a square of? One is the square of itself. One is the square of an integer. Four is the square of an integer. And the integer happens to be two. Four is the square of an integer. The integer, uh, integer being two. Nine is the square of an integer. Integer in question here is, uh, integer in question is three. Three squared. Nine is the square of an integer. You get the idea. So when someone says that this particular integer, this particular number is the square of an integer, they're just being cute, they're just being annoying. They're, what they're telling you is that this particular integer is a perfect square. And the question simply here, the question that is being asked here is, of all the integers, of all the positive integers that is, that are less than 81, how many of them are not perfect square? How many of them are, how many of them are not perfect square? The easiest, the simplest, and the quickest way to take care of this thing is to ask yourself, first of all, how many total integers are there? How many total integers are there that are positive and less than 81? Well, there are 80 of them, 1 through 80. Of those 80 integers that are less than 81, how many of them are perfect square? Figure out what, figure that out first. Once we know how many of them are perfect square, 
We just subtract that number from the total and we'll have the ones that are not perfect square. Let's do that, shall we? So here we are. So we have 16, we have 25, and then we'll have our 36, 49, 64, and 81. Of course, 81 is more than 80. We're looking for, we're looking for less than 81. The set consists of all the positive integers less than 81 that are not perfect square. So 81 does not count. So how many are there? How many, how many of these 80 integers are perfect square? As you can see, there are 8 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's all. So here's our column A, which is number of integers in the set. Number of integers. In the set, we have a total of 80 minus, minus the number that are perfect square. Number that are perfect squares. And how many are there? We just found out there are 8 of them. So it's just 80 minus 8. 80 minus 8 is 72 and that is exactly what we see in column column B. 72 and 72 the answer is C. Of all in other, in other words of all the of all the positive integers less than 81 72 of them happen to be not a perfect square. 8 of them are perfect square therefore 72 of them out of those 80 are not perfect square and therefore the answer is C. And that's all. That's all there is. I'll see you tomorrow where we'll continue the problems that you see on the next page. Problem number seven is what we're going to do next time, which is a very nasty problem uh, if you do not understand the concept, but we'll, we'll get to it tomorrow. Okay? I'll see you then. Bye now.